up y'all my name is taylor king and welcome to my channel where we focus on self-care from the inside out so today we're going to be doing the first of our hair care at home series i am super excited about this now fun fact about me is that for most for all of my childhood i thought i was going to be some sort of scientist when i grew up um, I thought I was going to be a urologist. That was the first job that I remember saying that I wanted to do. And if you don't know what a urologist is, it's basically a pee doctor. Um, and then I said I was going to be a chemist for cosmetic companies. Then I was like, no, I want to be um, a pharmacist. And I did not pursue any of those things. But something that has stayed with me is that I love creating things. I love mixing things. I love to learn about ingredients. Um, and how they treat your hair, your body, your skin, whatever it is that you're, you're using, whatever products. Um, and so with that, there's a lot of things that we can make at home that are incredible. And so I'm going to be sharing things with you all that are my staples. I use them all the time. I'm going to be trying some new things out. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to have this experience to share with you all. So the very first thing we're going to be making is rice water. Now, rice water is very ancient. Um, it's not something that I created. Specifically, I'm going to give credit to China because I'm sure many other Asian countries that eat a heavy rice diet would be using rice water in some way. But in China in particular, ancient China, the Yao people have been using this for centuries. All right. And so they use it to get long, shiny hair. And that is a symbol of longevity, of uh, wealth, of health. Um, and it, it is in their culture um, a way that women express themselves. It also has been used in um, ancient Chinese royalty. All right, princesses have used this. Um, and so we're doing a royal treatment today. So get ready to treat yourself. So rice is obviously incredibly healthy. Um, it contains many vitamins and nutrients that are necessary to our body. And so something that it does for our hair in particular um, is that it is supplied with something called panthenic, panthenic, panthenic acid, I wanna say. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, let me know. Um, and this is the thing that Pantene, the brand, has name themselves after it is a version of vitamin b um, and it is proven to help to prevent hair loss so help prevent hair loss but also help with hair growth it also um, has been given credit to help slow down grays so if that's something that's on your mind this might be something for you rice also contains folic acid Folic acid is incredible for, um, I guess, like the cell regeneration for your hair, for your scalp. It has vitamin E, and if you don't know, if you've never heard of one of the things that I feel like so many companies are always trying to throw at us, it's vitamin E because it is incredible for your skin and your hair. And the last big thing about rice is that it has protein. So this is a protein treatment. Now, I'm gonna call it a light protein treatment. In my last video, be sure to check that out if you haven't, get to know your hair. Um, I talked about protein and moisture balance, specifically protein sensitivity. Now, I am one of those people who is protein sensitive. That means that I have to be really careful about how much protein I put in my hair. Um, and so coconut oil is something I have to be careful with because of the protein in it. Um, and rice water is something that I also have to be careful with. And so for my own personal hair care routine, I only use rice water when I um, get out of the shower. So after I do my regular shampoo and condition um, and I'm about to style, it is like a primer to my styling that I spray this in my hair. And I'll talk about how I do that exactly later on. But this could also be used for you as a regular old refresher throughout the week. If your hair is feeling a little bit dry and you're not protein sensitive, this could be a great refresher for you. I have an even better refresher that I'm going to be filming um, for your hair just to keep it moisturized. But rice water is incredible. Now, not only are we going to be using rice water, but we are going to be fermenting the rice water. Now, fermented rice water is really healthy because that fermentation process boosts all of the vitamin, the vitamins boosts all of the vitamins and minerals that are already in it. 
um, and it makes it even more potent. So as we're applying this, we've like doubled up on the yummy good stuff that's in it. And then fermentation is really good because it also makes the formula acidic. And for your scalp, that means that it helps to balance the pH. So we're balancing the pH of our scalp. We are boosting it with lots of vitamins and minerals that are gonna help to regenerate the cells, help to um, add to the structure of your hair through protein, and help overall with the health of your scalp. What do we need to make our rice water? First things first, rice. Um, I don't, I'm not personally particular about white rice, black rice, brown rice. Um, a coworker of mine told me to use black rice and I still have not yet because I tend to only have brown rice in my house um, or white rice. Um, but you wanna use organic, all right? Organic rice, if that's what you've got. If not, use whatever you got in your cabinet. Next, we're gonna need some sort of a measurer. Um, one cup is gonna work good for me. You're gonna need some water. Yes, this water is in a bottle. Um, it's alkaline water. If you have good tap water, use that. Um, since I am not in my kitchen, I'm going to be using this bottle of water. You're gonna want a mason jar or two. I'm actually using two, but I'll be showing you one. Um, just because I don't have any extra clean large ones, I need to wash my other ones out. But you can buy mason jars just at the grocery store. Or if you use a jar of any sort at home, you can just clean that out and use it for this fermentation process. You're gonna want a strainer. Rice is dirty. This is something that I did not know until here recently. Rice is dirty, and I know for some of you, you're gonna say, duh, but I didn't know that. So you're gonna wanna rinse the, the rice off first. This goes for cooking rice. This also goes for um, creating your rice water. And then last but absolutely not least, you're gonna need some sort of a spray bottle. I have a glass one. Um, I make a lot of products, so I just like to keep these glass ones that are really easy to clean out. If something gets rancid because I forgot about it or I stopped using it or whatever, for whatever reason, then um, it's, gonna, it's gonna serve me just fine. And those are our ingredients. So let's get into creating this. So I'm going to take one cup of my rice water and I'm gonna pour it into, into my strainer. Let me do this over my bowl. <laughs> and for this strainer, actually, this is a tea strainer that I use for my kettle that it's multi-purpose. I'm gonna go rinse this out and I'll be right back. All right, we have some clean rice. I am going to take my rice and pour this whole cup into a bowl. Now, knock that out, I'm going to take a cup of water. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio right now. So I just poured my rice into this bowl of water. And let's see if I can get this so you all can see. Yes, you can. I am going to just start to knead the rice in this water and Y'all know, when rice starts to get wet, the water starts to like milk a bit, and that is what we're looking for, this rice water, rice milk, whatever you like to call it. Um, so I just work it in here. As you can see, the water's starting to get milky. I'm gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes. Um, you can leave it 20, 30 minutes, it doesn't really matter. Because you're not adding heat to it, the rice is not gonna swell. If we were to cook it, it would swell and there would be no more water, but we're not doing that. We're just letting this sit. And for some portion of the time, I do squeeze it around because I wanna get as many nutrients out of this rice as I can. All right, let's swap this out. This is a bowl that I have already milked. As you can see, this is really milky. Um, and that's what we're looking for. So now I'm going to take my mason jar. Take my mason jar and I'm going to split this because these don't fit, the size of this is not gonna fit all of this rice, but I'm gonna split this rice and water and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, here is my rice. So I split the rice into two different um, jars, but this is what it looks like. Now, 
the key for this the reason why we wanted to like squeeze it out for to for the first kind of portion of this is that we wanted to get the nutrients into the water now we have this nutrient rich water and the rice now this is the fun part and this takes so little work i'm gonna put the top on make sure i really lock it well mm. All right, it's nice and locked. I like to shake it. This is something I made up for myself. No one told me to do this, but in my mind, it just gives it that little extra boost. <laughs> and it's all mixed up. I am going to put this in my um, cabinet, and I have another one to show you because I've already fermented that one. This is my one that has been sitting in the cabinet. The thing with fermenting water, as fabulous as this treatment is, as much as many nutrients as it has in it, this is not uh, scent friendly, <laughs> okay? It smells kind of bad. And it kind of smells, it reminds me of like the scent of beer. And I believe, is, is beer fermented? I feel like it is. Okay, we're gonna take this off. Now we have this wonderful mixture. And what's so fantastic about it is that it's ready to rock and roll. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to strain this water and put it back into our bottle. I've got an empty bowl, same bowl I was using earlier, and I've got my strainer. And now I'm just gonna pour this into the strainer, into this bowl, and um, not let any of the rice get into the water. All right, there it is. And here you have it, my friends, is my rice water. You see how milky it is? There's something we can do for the scent, and I personally don't tend to do this because I'm fine with it. Um, the scent dissipates really quickly, so it's not something you have to like keep dealing with for days. I spray it in and I stop smelling it really after I put my hair products in my hair. Because like I said, I use this as like a base for my styling. Um, something that you can do now is if you have essential oils, you can add it. Now, there are a couple of key uh, essential oils that I'm gonna recommend to you all based off of what it is that you may or may not be looking for. So the first two are lavender and tea tree. Lavender and tea tree are really good for your scalp when it comes to dandruff, dry scalp, itchiness. Um, if you add any essential oil to this, you just wanna add maybe five drops tops. You don't wanna add too much. Um, essential oil is powerful. It is so finely condensed and just action packed um, that you don't need a much. You don't, you don't need much. So you just drop your five drops in there. Um, another good one, peppermint. If you're really looking for scalp stimulation, um, blood flow to your scalp, that's gonna help your hair grow. Peppermint's a really good one for that. Another good one is rosemary. So rosemary is, um, it's good for, it also stimulates your scalp and the blood flow, but rosemary is pretty cool because if graying is something that you're not interested in, it's gonna help to slow that down. And that's an ancient Mediterranean trick. So we're mixing the cultures together over here. I don't feel the need to add essential oils because I use my potion hair oil or other products that have essential oils in them and I'm okay with that, um, but that's up to you. If you wanna add something just purely for scent, another good one is orange blossom or orange oil. Um, it smells really good, it's really refreshing, um, and yeah, it can be beneficial for you too. So I'm gonna take this bad boy and I'm gonna pour it into my spray bottle. We poured it in here and we have our final product. And this is your rice water. Now, um, remember I did have two of them, so this is all of the water in one place. What is important is that this fermented water is not preserved. There is no preservatives in this. It's just gonna keep fermenting to get sour. We have to preserve this, and the easiest way to do it is to just throw it in the fridge. There's two benefits to that. So yes, the first one, we throw it on the fridge, it keeps it preserved. I keep mine really until it's done or if it starts smelling like rancid, then I stop using it. Um, but I also like to keep it in the fridge because when I get out of the shower, and again, I'm using this as a primer to whatever treatment I'm doing, 
the cold water helps to close my cuticles a little bit now you do want to be careful with this if you're one of the people that you watched my video about how to learn your hair and you learn that you have low porosity hair you may not want to um, immediately use it out of the fridge the thing is that the cool temperature is going to close the cuticle um, it can be temporary so if you're someone with high porosity you absolutely want to take it out of the fridge and apply it to your hair for me, I'm, I'm low to medium, I said that in the video, so I'm actually just fine with it. it. It works well for me. So how do I apply this to my hair? So I said earlier that I just put it on my scalp and that's literally it. When I get out of the shower, I take this, I flip my hair upside down and I just spritz all along my scalp, separating, spray, 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 all along my scalp. From there, I give myself a nice massage Make sure that that water is in my hair. And another good thing to keep in mind is that if your hair is already drenched, it's not gonna accept the rice water. So you do have to towel dry your hair a little bit. I use a t-shirt or a microfiber towel. So I put that um, on my hair first and then I do this. So I spray my scalp real good, massage it, and then I take the rest of it down the ends of, look at me doing my little sprays, <laughs> and down the ends of my hair so that um, it's all coated. And now my hair is drenched in the rice water and I pop this bad boy right back in the fridge so it stays preserved. So that is your key, that is how you make this work. Again, you can use this, oh my gosh y'all, this fly is getting on my nerves. Again, you can use this um, as a refresher throughout the week if you're someone who is not protein sensitive, if you are, don't, don't do all that, that might be a little too much for you. But you gotta figure it out for your hair what that protein moisture balance looks like. So that, my friends, is the very first video of hair care at home. So if this was helpful for you, please give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more of these types of videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, honey, and you'll come check me out later. See you next time.